Hello, my name is Dick Baldwin. Welcome to my online lectures for ITSC 2321, Object-Oriented Programming Using Java. This series of online lectures will approximate the lectures that I normally deliver in the classroom each semester. When completed, this series of online lectures will consist of many hours of video material broken down into 15 different lectures. Each lecture will be broken down into segments of approximately 15 minutes each to satisfy the YouTube length limitations. This is the beginning of part one of lecture 10 titled Interfaces, Objects, Ar Object Arrays, and Etc. I invite you to visit my college website at the address that I am highlighting now. That is where, where you will find the syllabus for this course along with other online information regarding this course. I also invisit, invite you to visit my personal website at the address that I'm highlighting now. When you visit that site, you will, you will find more than 600 tutorials that I have written on various aspects of computer programming, digital signal processing, and other computer-related topics. Students enrolled in this course are expected to study my tutorials number 1600 through 1630 at this address. Those students are also expected to study the material in the course textbook. So without further delay, let's enter the world of object-oriented programming. This is the beginning of lecture number 10 titled Interfaces, Object Arrays, etc. One of the very important concepts in object-oriented programming using Java is the use of the Java interface. In this lesson you will learn about interface definitions, you will learn about implementing an interface in a class definition, you will learn about defining interface methods in a class definition, storing references to new objects in elements of an array of type object, casting elements to an interface type in order to call interface methods, parameterized constructors, and last but not least is the overridden toString method. In this lecture, I will explain a program that uses the class definition that begins on the upper right of your screen to produce the text output shown on the lower right of your screen. That text output appears on the command line screen. This program does not produce graphic output images, therefore it can be compiled and executed without a requirement to have Barb Erickson's media library on the class path. The required output text consists of the six lines of text shown on the lower right of your screen. Because the program generates random data for testing, the actual values that are produced will differ from one run of the program to the next. In all cases, the three values in the first row will be a sequence of consecutive integers 
in increasing algebraic order from left to right. All three values in the second row will match the value of the center number in the first row. All three values in the third row will be algebraically five greater than the values in the second row. As usual, the student is allowed to define new classes as necessary to cause the program to behave as required. However, the student is not allowed to modify the class definition for the class named Prob05 that begins on the upper right of your screen. Also, as usual, I will explain this program by breaking the code down into fragments and explaining the fragments. The driver class for the program begins on the upper right of your screen. The code in this fragment performs the following actions. It gets and saves a random value of type int. It instantiates a new two element array of type object. It populates the array object with references to objects of the classes named prob05 my class A and prob05 my class B. Recall that a reference to any object of any class or interface type can be stored in an array element of type object. The same random value is passed to the constructor for both objects when they are instantiated. So at this point, let's put the driver class named Prob05 on temporary hold while I explain the class named Prob05 my class A. As you can see from the code on the upper right of your screen, the class name Prob05 my class A implements the interface named Prob05x. Therefore, I will explain the interface first. The interface named Prob05x is now showing in its entirety on the upper right of your screen. The code on the upper right of your screen is the definition of the interface named prob05x. An interface definition can contain only two kinds of members, constants and method declarations. By now, you should have studied interfaces in my online tutorials and therefore this explanation will be rather brief. The code in the upper right of your screen contains two method declarations. A method declaration does not have a body. The purpose of the method declaration is to establish the programming interface that consists of the return type, the name, the arguments, etc. so that any class that implements the interface will match uh, that 
interface again in terms of type, name, arguments, etc. I'm not sure that what I said there made sense, so let me try again. The purpose of a method declaration is to establish the programming interface consisting of the return type, the name, the arguments, etc. for that method in any class that implements that interface. A method declaration provides no information about the behavior of the method. A method declaration is implicitly abstract. You learned about abstract methods in an earlier lesson. Any class that implements an interface containing method declarations inherits one or more abstract methods. Therefore, any class that implements an interface containing ab method declarations must provide a concrete version of every method that is declared in the interface or the class itself must be declared abstract. As you will recall, abstract essentially means incomplete. The interface definition on the right of your screen declares two such abstract methods. And as we already know, the class named prob05myclassA implements the interface shown on the upper right of your screen. Therefore, the definition for that class must provide concrete versions of the methods named getModifiedData and getData because those methods are declared in the interface definition shown on the upper right of your screen. The definition of the class named prob05myclassA begins on the upper right of your screen and as we pointed out earlier this class definition implements the interface named prob05 X.